after the switch has been closed a long time, here's what we do. We replace the battery with a switch. And here's how that looks. So what we'll do is we will open this switch right there at the same instant that we close that switch. Go back in time here. First, this switch was closed. I get up to some maximum value of I. The current is flowing. Now, that inductor is just like a mass. Once that current's flowing, it does not want to let the current stop. So as soon as you try to stop the current by disconnecting the battery, again, we must close this at the same instant so we still have a complete circuit. At that first instant, if E over R, if this, the EMF over here, if that EMF over this R is our, our, our uh, current when we open this switch and close that one, guess at that first instant what the current will be just for the first instant. Even though the, the battery is disconnected, it will remain at E over R for that one instant. This thing is trying to keep that current flowing. It's just like a mass wants to keep on going, this inductor wants to keep the current flowing. So for that first instant, I will start with my initial current, but then it will decay. Now, with no inductor, the current will go down to zero right away. But that's not what happens when we have an inductor in here. Here's what happens. And you can probably guess. It starts off at that first instant that the switch is open, but the current is still going. Guess what the EMF that that inductor creates when you disconnect that battery is? What EMF do we get? So notice this first instant, we still get a current of EMF over R, the same source EMF over R, but then it gets less and less successful. The current continues to decay. And a similar thing here, we get at 37% of our maximum current. Uh, that happens at one inductive time constant. Why is it, what is it, what does that 0.37 come from? Anybody remember? What is, uh, well, 0.63 comes from this too. It's not from 0.63. E to the negative one. It's uh, when uh, the time right here is equal to the time constant, this exponent is negative one. When the time is equal to the time constant, exponent's negative one. E to the negative one is 0.37, and that's how you get at 37, you get 37% of the maximum current at one time constant. Very similar to discharging capacitor. So this current is going around clockwise like this. That's the current. The inductor says, I don't want that to stop. I'm so used to it. I like things as they are. So it's going to have to. The thing is, there's no more EMF pushing it around from the battery because that's now been out of the circuit. In fact, so we're not confused. I'm just going to go ahead and erase this because that battery is really not in the circuit anymore. All we have is this with the current going around at time equals zero with uh, at E over R is the current. So what is the inductor going to do to try to keep that current the same? I'm kind of asking you the polarity of this inductor. At this point, which way is going to push? Well, to keep it going around, it's going to have to have its positive end right here, its negative end right there, so the current keeps pushing around like that. So notice that our inductor has now, in a way, for at least one instant, taken over for the battery. And for that first instant, it will maintain that current. But what's going to happen to the current, you suppose, after that? This thing does not have an infinite amount of energy in it. Uh, by the way, if, you, uh, if you'd like, some people like to draw these in, these magnetic field lines. Those are B field lines. They contain energy, but they don't contain an infinite amount of energy like our ideal battery does. So that magnetic field is going to decrease because the current is going to decrease. Um, that inductor is not storing an infinite amount of energy. So let's go ahead and use our loop rule. I'll at least get you started off for this to use our loop rule to figure out what the time dependent current is. Now, using our loop rule to start off, start right here at our resistor and then go to that side. Are we going higher or lower in potential energy? 
Well, if you said lower, you'd be right. It's minus IR. Now, how about this? When we get to here, and we're going to this side of the inductor, is that minus or plus? We're going to a higher potential energy. You might guess plus, and in a way you're right, because we are going to a higher potential energy. It is going to be plus some amount. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to write this as minus L D I D T. Why am I going to write it there? And back we're back where we started right there. Equals zero. Why am I writing it? It's it's a positive value. This, the back EMF negative L D I D T, it's a positive value. Why did I put negative there? It's because the current, think about this, is the current going to increase or decrease? In our previous case, it started at zero, it was going to increase to E over R. Here we don't have an infinite amount of energy, it's going to decrease. So what is negative in this term right there? What is negative? DI dt. This is a negative term right there. So DI dt is negative, negative. L D I D T, where overall that whole thing will be positive. The bottom line of all that is when you're constructing equations using the loop rule, when traveling around your circuit in the direction of positive current, the term will always be negative L D I D T, which makes sense because the back EMF is always opposing the direction of the change of current. So this is actually a positive, we are going up. Uh, but that's because di dt is negative because the current's going to decrease. So basically, if you want to, you can just write it like this. Uh, some people just like to write it ir plus l di dt equals zero. That's the same equation right there. Either one is, you could use either one, and now you are going to have to derive the time dependent current for this situation. That is a problem that you're going to have to do.